Okay, in this video I just want to do two more examples of simplifying some expressions with negative exponents and these are going to be certainly a little more complicated. We'll have to use a lot of the basic exponent rules to do these problems. Um, so the first one here, inside the parentheses we have 7 squared, x to the negative fourth, y to the third. That's all being raised to the negative second power. And then that's divided by 7x squared, y to the fourth, all raised to the negative fifth power. So there's certainly a couple different ways in which you could do these. Um, and I'll maybe do one example one way and the other the other way. Um, we could certainly move this whole thing on top to the bottom and make it to the positive second power and move the whole thing on the bottom to the top and make it to the positive fifth power. Or we could simply use the rules that we've seen before where if things are in parentheses you multiply. So my 7, it was originally to the second power, but if I take my 2 times my negative 2, that's going to turn to the negative fourth power. I've got x to the negative fourth, but again I'm going to multiply the negative 4 by the negative 2, so that's going to give me x to the positive 8. And then if I multiply on my y, I'll get y to the negative sixth power, so 3 times negative 2. On the bottom, Remember there's an exponent here, so be careful. Again, I think people have a tendency to only want to somehow apply the exponent to the variables, but you have to do it to the number as well. So this is to the first power, so that's going to give us 7 to the negative fifth power. We'll get x to the negative 10 power, and then when we take 4 times 5, we'll get y to the negative 20 power. Okay, and now I'm going to do the trick that I did before. I'm just going to take everything a piece at a time, a factor at a time, um, and I'm going to think, well, if it's got a negative exponent, I'm going to put it uh, on the other side of the fraction. Again, I'm allowed to do this because there's all multiplication on the top and the bottom. So I look at my 7 to the, um, my seven to the negative 4. That'll go into the denominator, 7 to the positive 4th. My x to the 8th is already positive, so I'm going to leave that one on top. My y to the negative 6, I'm going to put on the bottom as y to the positive 6. And now I'm going to look at the denominator. I've got a 7 to the negative 5th. If I put that on top, it'll go a 7 to the positive 5th. My x to the negative 10 will go upstairs as x to the positive 10. And my y to the negative 20 will go upstairs as y to the 20th. So to me, this is a, I like this because now my exponents are positive, and the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to simplify by subtracting exponents. So I have 7 to the 5th over 7 to the 4th. Again, if we take the bigger exponent, that's where the 7's will stay. And if you take 5 minus 4, that'll give us to the first power. Um, notice I have x to the 8th times x to the 10th in the numerator. There's no x's in the denominator now, so if I multiply x to the 8th times x to the 10th, we add the exponents. That'll give us x to the 18th power. And we have y to the 20 over y to the 6th. Again, if we subtract, the bigger y is on top. If we take 20 minus 6, we'll get to the 14th power. And really, we, we, got, we canceled out everything in the, in the denominator. So but you can always imagine there was a times one in the bottom. Um, that doesn't, again, it doesn't change its value. So there's still a one in the denominator. But when we divide by one, we typically don't write it as a fraction. So we could write this final, our final answer is seven x to the 18th, y to the 14th power. All right, so one other one here, we have a uh, 6 to the third, xy to the negative first, and then we have 6 squared, x squared, y cubed to the negative second. I, I, in this one I'm going to do what I said I could do on the first example. Okay? If you look at this part, you know this has the exponent of negative 1, so everything that's inside the parentheses, that's 6 cubed xy, we could move that to the denominator and make it to the positive first power. Likewise, the thing in the denominator, the 6 squared, x squared, y cubed to the negative second, I can put that on the top, excuse me, I can put that on the top as 6 squared, and notice I'm not doing anything to the inside, I'm just rewriting it. The thing that changes is the exponent outside, so that'll become to the positive second power. 
And now we're just going to do the same thing as before, just try to simplify this a little bit. So again, I'm going to have to multiply exponents. So I've got 6 to the second squared. That'll give me 6 to the fourth power. I've got x squared squared. That'll be x to the fourth power. I've got y to the third squared. That'll be y to the sixth power. And in the denominator, anything raised to the first power is just itself. So we'll just be left simply with 6 to the third. And I'm going to put some exponents in here. x to the first, y to the first. Okay, and again, if you multiply 3 and 1, 1 and 1, 1 and 1, you'll get the correct exponents. And now just the same thing as before. Um, I'm just going to subtract exponents. So I look at, there's a 6 on top, there's a 6 on the bottom. The bigger exponents in the numerator, so the 6's will stay in the numerator. I take 4 minus 3, that'll give me to the first power. I've got x's on top, x's on the bottom. The bigger exponents on the top. If I take 4 minus 1, I'll get to the third power. I've got y's on the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator. If I take uh, 6 minus 1, I'll get y to the fifth. And again, we, we basically canceled out everything in the denominator, but there's still a 1 down there. There's, people will sometimes say there's nothing down there and put a 0, which is uh, a big, a kind of a big mistake. So there still is a 1 down there. So we're left simply in this case with 6x to the third, y to the fifth power, and that would be a nice simplified reduced uh, uh, form of this original expression.